screen. There we go. All right, it's two o'clock on Thursday, November 3rd. We do have our in-person thing tomorrow and I thought of something else I was supposed to tell you, but now I can't remember what it was. <laughs> anyway, um, oh, I know what it was. If you are not coming in person and you want to join along with like our engineering um, program, if you look on our agenda and you can either look at our, um, our week long one on Friday, you can see it says Zoom to Engineering Activity. It says, or even if you want to sit at the art table with people and chat, you'll need to bring your own supplies, obviously, if you're at home. So if you're coming in in person, you don't need to bring anything. But if you're at home and you wanted to be put in a breakout room to solve an engineer challenge with some other kids, you'd need to bring spoon, string, yarn, floss, toilet paper rolls, tape, stuff from the recycling bin, okay, to build with. And if you're planning to just sit around and do art, you need to collect your own art supplies. Unless you're coming in person, we'll have everything there. But I just wanted to give you a heads up that if you want to join us. And then also, um, today's lesson has got a little experiment. I think it's on page five, but I could be wrong. Um, nope, it's not on page five. Let's check page four. So tomorrow's... Uh, not talk like a scientist. Here it is. Okay, here we go. So on tomorrow's science assignment on page four, it's 16 pages long. It's really long and we have several days to do it, but I thought it'd be fun if we did this experiment together. So for this experiment, you need a ball of aluminum foil. So you just take aluminum foil and squish it in a ball and you need to bring, um, four of the following items, either water, a glass, rice, sand, a bowl, craft paper, cardboard, ice pop sticks, glue, or tape. And then as a group, well, not as a group, everybody in their own little space would build a way to stop an aluminum ball to stop gravity from falling. And then we would share our ideas of what we did. So we'll do an experiment tomorrow together, but you need to collect these things before the two o'clock Zoom tomorrow. So that'll be kind of fun to do together. Um, we're also gonna, I'm gonna try to go get those rubber bands so we can try to blow up a pumpkin because that, that, that seemed super fun and see how many rubber bands it takes. You don't have to do that, but you can. And I've collected art supplies and some other things that you can use tomorrow at, <laughs> at uh, um, Flex. So right now it's time for science. And today I gave you, I don't know why I gave you three whole days to do that science because you really did not need to have three whole days to do it. But today you need to submit the quiz from the first science lesson. And then as you looked at the schedule for tomorrow, you'll see that tomorrow I've assigned this lesson, 602 Falling from Earth. You really only have two days to do this one and it's 16 pages long. So I thought I would start reading through this lesson a little bit today. If you've already started it, you don't have to listen, but you can if you want to. I'm not going to read the whole thing, but I thought I'd get up to our experiment. So tomorrow we could do the experiment and finish the lesson in class. So this goes right with Nora's presentation today. Um, first of all, I have some people who've joined us just now who haven't done presentations for the class yet. Is there anybody here right now who wanted a chance to present their Flexpert project to the class? No pressure, but if you'd like to, you're welcome to. Nope. Okay, Amadi, stay on afterwards and you and I can do your experiment or your uh, Flexpert project, okay? All right, awesome. Remind me, don't let me forget. Okay, so science lesson 602, falling to earth, force in motion. Gravity is such a downer. <laughs> Without it, every time you hit a baseball, you'd make a home run, kind of like in space. That's because gravity pulls objects toward the ground. Hitting all those home runs would be fun for a while, but too much of a good thing gets boring. Gravity keeps us on our toes, literally. Do you know? Do you want to know more? Let's investigate this pulling force. And one little fact I know about gravity is when the um, when the astronauts go up in the International Space Station, there's no gravity up there, and they lose their muscle mass and their faces get real fat because part of what keeps our faces looking thin is gravity. So the gravity pulls our faces down, and if we don't have gravity pulling on us, then our faces balloon out <laughs> and our hair goes everywhere right so it's a good thing we have gravity so we can look our best i have a question yeah i already did the science for today but i'm still doing math so can someone help me with the math 
Well, I can, but not while I'm teaching science, right? Did you want yeah. a peer? Did you want a peer to go in a room and help you with the math? Or not? Did you want a classmate to go help you with the math, Liam? Yeah, I was just wondering that. Do I have someone here who would like to teach Liam the math from today who feels like they really understood the math today and wants to help him with it? Mm. Eli, you feel comfortable with today's math? Hey, bro. Bro, is that David? Yeah. <laughs> what are you saying, David? Well, Liam, why don't you stay on afterwards and um, I'll show it to you then, okay? Okay, because I'm just on the... Okay, but right now, pay attention to the science because it's going to be tomorrow's science, okay? All right, so we're going to learn about forces that move objects, evidence to support an argument that gravity causes objects to fall down. This is going to be kind of important because this month or this week's science lesson next week, um, that it's going to be due on Monday or Tuesday, I'm not sure which, you have to write a little argument about why gravity causes objects to fall down toward the center of the earth. Use appropriate reference materials to support your scientific understanding. Page two, pulling things down. Do I have any skateboarders here? Anybody who skateboards? Me. Mm -hmm. Has gravity ever pulled you down? Uh, I don't, are you well? Mm. To the ground? <laughs> yeah. yeah, I fall off a lot. Skateboarding is a bit of an art. Take two, two feet, add four rolling wheels and a little bit of gravity and watch the board flip and fly in the air. Some of the best tricks on skateboarding would not be possible without gravity. Take a look at this kick flip. What would happen if gravity was not pulling the boy and the skateboard toward the ground? I guess he'd just go off into space, wouldn't he? Maybe they would just stay in the air and not be pulled to the ground. Gravity is a force that pulls all objects with mass toward the ground. Can you identify the object that gravity will pull down toward the ground? So in this picture, what's gravity going to pull down? I, and I think there are two answers here. What do you guys see? A, a kite and a bicycle. I see a kite here, but I also see clouds. Does gravity pull anything out of the, the clouds to Earth? No. Sure it does. Does I rain float up? Yeah, rain floats oh. up. Oh, oh yeah, that. rain. Mm -hmm. So this one just says the kite, but it also pulls the the um the the rain down. What keeps the kite in the air? What allows it to defy gravity? Wind, wind. Yeah, the wind. Remember how we learned? Yeah, the wind. But do you remember? Is it the wind under the kite or the wind over the kite? Remember what happens when you blow on a piece of toilet paper? It lifts it up, doesn't it? That's Bernoulli's principle. Cool. And in this case, what happens if they don't have the hot air filling the balloon with hot air? It will fall. It will fall. <laughs> it will go down slowly because it has hot air keeping it up. But eventually, gravity will pull the balloon down toward ground. And the jumper on the bike has to come down. All what goes up must come down. And it's a good thing we have gravity or all the waterfalls would just go out into space. Does gravity work on very small things like raindrops and snowflakes? Yes. You think so? Yes. yes. Both of those things fall down. You know, they said it could snow on Monday, but I, I'm not believing them, but we'll see. Oh, look at that kitten. Gravity affects everything. Kittens can fly. Well, this one thinks he can. With one big pounce, the kitten flies through the air like a superhero, but eventually he will fall down toward the ground. Gravity affects everything and everyone, even superhero kittens. Let's explore the force of gravity and its effect on falling objects. Has anybody ever gone to that place in Beaverton where they have that column of air that keeps you in the air floating? I can't remember what it's called. No, nobody's been to that. You can pay and go to this place and you get into this tube and they have this high column of air that blows and it holds you in the air and then the floor drops out and you're oh, just- Oh, I floating. know those, I know those. I forgot the like a drop. Slide. I've never been there, but it sounds pretty cool. I, I've seen, I've seen one. Yeah, the gravity is still there, but you know. What yeah, and, it, and I've seen one and it's horrifying. <laughs> Might be cool. What force is pulling the child down toward the water? Everybody? Gravity. Gravity? Gravity. Gravity. Hmm. 
Yeah. Did you know objects can overcome gravity? The Willis Tower in Chicago stands at 440 meters in height. It's one of the tallest buildings in the United States. Near the top of the building on the 103rd floor is an observation deck with a glass floor. If you're brave enough to walk out on the glass floor, you will be almost four football fields from the ground. You will also have overcome gravity. The building and the glass floor act as a support preventing gravity from pulling you all the way to the ground. Wow. And tomorrow I'm gonna to do some experiments for you if I don't mess up with overcoming gravity. What goes up must come down. Ooh, has anybody ever gone on a roller coaster? Me. Yeah? Me a hundred times. Did you know roller I'm... coasters only use gravity? They have engines that take you up, but once you start rolling, most of that is just gravity and momentum keeping you moving. Yep, yep, I know that. I saw that. Whoosh down the tracks, that roller coaster sure moves fast. Gravity pulls the roller coaster cart down the track toward the ground, which creates waves of motion and sometimes makes our stomachs ache and our heads spin, always. Regardless, it sure is fun. As the roller coaster cart goes down a track, gravity is pulling it down toward the ground. As the coaster zooms up the other side of the track, the cart is overcoming gravity. Let's take a closer look at gravity and identify how it pulls things down. In this next idea or activity, you will explore gravity in action as well as learn ways in which objects can overcome gravity. So here's where we're gonna do this experiment tomorrow. Record all the things around you that are examples of objects that move downward or fall due to gravity. So look around your room right now and see if you can find anything that would fall <laughs> due to gravity. My fan. <laughs> Don't drop everything, but will small things fall? I wonder if a small thing and a and a big Let's thing see. Will Let's fall see. Fall at the same speed. Oh, okay. I'll try. Wow, it looked like it. I think they both hit my lap at the same time. You have yeah. one minute to make observations. Good. I see a lot of observations. Cool. Let's try this again. I won't drop my cat. She wouldn't like it. <laughs> yeah, the marble moves the, drops faster. Okay, identifying gravity in action. Choose a setting you enjoy, such as an amusement park, playground, or sports field, and think of all the possible objects that could be pulled toward the ground, or even more fun, imagine what it would be like at the amusement park if there was no gravity. It would probably be stuck. <laughs> We'd all be floating around, wouldn't we? We'd all be stuck up on a roller coaster forever. Yeah, I don't know if we'd go up for sure. We'd just kind of float around, I think. No, I think this, no, this, isn't there like an engine? Okay, so then this next experiment is the one we're going to do tomorrow. So when you come to the Zoom at two o'clock, make sure you bring your aluminum foil, your water, glass, rice, sand, a bowl, craft paper, cardboard, ice pop stick, glue, and tape. Maximum of four items. What if you don't have that. Overcome gravity. What if you we don't have, have any of those? You don't what have any don't... of those. You don't have water? What, wait, what if you don't have like at least one of them or two? Do you have water, Eli? Yes. Do you have a glass at your house? Yes. Do you have rice in your kitchen? Yes. Do you have a bowl in your house? Yes. Yes, you just answered yes to four. Do you have some aluminum foil? Yes. Okay, then you're gonna be okay. Talk wait, so we actually have to bring that? Yeah, bring it tomorrow and we will sit with our screens on and do the experiments for each other and I'll show you a few more experiments, okay? And then um, Wait, do do? a little self-check and that's about halfway through the thing. So I'm gonna stop my share for today. That's really all I have for today. So I'm gonna let you go a little bit early. My boys group though starts at 2.30. So you guys, um, I have to watch Amadi's presentation and answer Liam's question about math. Um, but I will set up a breakout room that you guys can go to and um, start hanging out. So let's see, who's, who's in that, that group? It's the 1B group. Oh, no, it's the, yeah, the warlords, right? No, no, is it? Yeah, today, that's tomorrow. Oh, no, no. Today's the untitled group. Amadi, Kainoa, Liam, Jax, and Lauren. So I'll let you guys go to that room and wait for Maestro Jani. She'll be here in about 10 minutes, okay? okay? Um, I don't see Lauren, Amadi, you're going to stay with me for a minute, Amadi, don't go yet, okay? Oops, Vivi, I just assigned you to that room. Okay, um, uh-oh, Jax left. 
Uh, Amadi Kainoa, where are you, Kainoa? Did Kainoa get kicked out? Uh oh. Liam, um, Lauren, Jax, and Kainoa. I don't I see don't Kainoa have, anymore. So I have a question about the. Yeah, Mah Amadi, don't go yet because you're going to do your thing. Liam and Amadi, have, stay here and ask. I have a question about the math. I'm just need help on the question four. Okay, well, let's do that together right now. Let's see if I got everybody else into their groups that needed to be in their group. Can we, uh, can you open breakout rooms? Well, I opened them for the kids in the um, book club, but I'm not going to open the other ones right now. So go do your other work. No breakout rooms right now, my friend. Okay. So okay. Do, I, do we leave or do we just stay in? You can leave if you're not in the entitled. Oh, okay. Uh, Bree. <laughs> Bye, yeah. I guess. Wait, so do I join or do I stay here? Uh, stay here for a minute. Actually, you know what? Adiosa! Liam and um, well, let's wait for a second because these nice these guys need to take off. Okay, so Amadi, Kainoa, Liam, Jackson, Lauren need to stay. I'm going to send them a quick note reminding them to come back in. I'll say mine's in the other. Mm -hmm. Okay. Um, get ready to share your screen in just a minute, Liam. Um, math, favorite course. Oh, no, language arts. Uh, Jax. Lauren. And who's the other one not here? Kainoa, which is weird. He's always here. He must have gotten kicked out. He got kicked out. Bye. Bye-bye. Zoom in for book club at 2.30. I'm kind of I'm confused on this on um, question four because mm -hmm. the estimate doesn't make any sense. All right, just a second, and we will look at it. Okay, send. All right, my friend. Um, let's take a look at it. Share. Uh, share the problem. So it's. Can you see it? It's kind of hard. Yeah, you know what, I'll just do it on a whiteboard. That way we'll all be able to see it. I've already done the problem, so I will take a look at it. So it's number four, 30, 33 hundredths times seven tenths. Is that it? Yeah, and then I don't get the estimate because usually the estimate's like an actual well, number. So what I, what I did for my estimate, I'm not sure what you did on your estimate, but I did um, 33 hundredths. I said that's about 0.3 times about 0.7, which equals 21 with two behind the decimal point, right? So 0.21 or 2100. Okay. That was my estimate. Does that estimate make sense to you? That estimates make a lot more sense. Okay. And then when you when you do the actual problem, right? Yeah. Are you doing it, are you doing it using squares or are you, you using just math? I'm doing it like Squares, squares. Okay, so let's put the the point three here, point three, and then make a line, and then point zero three, right? Yeah. Because that's three one hundredths. Yeah. And then over here, point seven. What is three times seven? Point three times seven. Point three times seven. Twenty one. Yep. Yeah. And in this case, it's 0.3 times 0 0.7. So what is it? 7 times 3.7. Well, the big thing is you just have to count, Liam, 1, 2 to the right of the decimal point. So you know the decimal goes here, 0.21. In other words, 3 tenths times 7 tenths. 7 tenths and 7 tenths is 14 tenths, and 7 more tenths is 21 tenths, or 21 hundredths, sorry. Yeah, so... Okay. so and then seven times three again over here is also 21, but this time, how many are behind the decimal? One, two, three. Do you see that? Yeah. What do I have to do here? Put, put a dot. A zero, I have to add a zero so that there'll be one, two, three behind the decimal point. Do you see that? Yeah. Okay, and then I just have to add it up and I just have to make sure that it's lined up. So zero, two, one, plus point two, 
one is one, three point two. Is our answer pretty close to our estimate? Yeah, pretty close. You check. Nice. That's it. Okay, so now I can probably do the line part with 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 uh I don't know how to get off this whiteboard. How do I how do I stop the share? Uh oh. I don't know how to stop the share. Can I close it? Ah oh, no. Oh, close whiteboard. There it is. Okay. All right. Um, so you guys can go to room one and hopefully the other boys will come and in five minutes, Mrs. Janney will be here. Okay. okay. Actually, Ma Amadi, stay here because you have to present your thing to me. So, um, Liam, go ahead and go though, because he doesn't want an audience. Oh. Sorry. I know. Would you? Can Liam stay in here about the Hundred Year War or not? No. Okay, Liam. Bye, bye, Liam. <laughs> go ahead, Amadi. Share your screen with me. Oh. All right. Let me. All right. <laughs> Excellent. Wow, look at that. England, France, Hundred Years War. Okay, so tell me about it. I think you're muted. Madi, you're definitely muted. I cannot hear you. Yay. My, my, it, it, it could not, I had to mute them. Yeah. Okay, tell me why you chose this topic. Yeah, 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 yeah. I know how they do that one, right? guys. So they know how to What I have said is before. I have done this before. I have done this so many times. I have done this before. Go ask your brother to be quiet for a minute. That would be nice. So many times. He's quiet now. Now I'm. <laughs> I don't think he's ever that quiet, is he? He, he can, he, he can't be quiet. Okay, and tell, he, tell me about this war. What was it about? Why were they fighting? They, they fought because the English king at the time, which was Andrew, what the star, so the star claim, claimed the French throne, which basically he, he said that, that he was the king of France. Oh, there we go. I'm the king of France today. I'm thinking of claiming the French throne. So I like French food. So he just decided to be the king? Yeah, he decided to become the king because I think his mother would have ta ties to France. Okay. France. Well, you know, those old kings and queens in Europe, they used to marry each other, marry their cousins and stuff. And so they were all related. Yeah. So what happened? The French didn't like it? Yeah, yeah the, they like it, but, but no real battle happened because war was expensive. No real battle, ha no battle happened until 1340 when, when, when Edward the, when Edward the third, third decided, the shy the to 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 have uh, buddy, do something for me okay i want you to take your hand and i want you to rub your arm with it if you start to stutter like that if you just rub your arm it usually makes the stuttering stop okay okay keep so, going if you start go like that he's the england king at the so so the back Slurs is a naval battle that leads to England secure in the center between France and England. Ooh, who won that battle? England. Oh, really? That, I guess that's why it's called the English Channel, not the French Channel. Yeah. <laughs> then what happened? 
Er the Duke of Brittany died, which was John the Third, resorting to both kingdoms occupying occupying the, the duchy, which was the small, which is basically just the small kingdom. Okay. But, mm. the, the truce of of Mar is negotiated. Well, which stopped fighting for a while. Okay. Uh, and then in 1646, Edward begins the Shar he can campaign by landing in Cotton, Car which, which was Norborn, France. And in a shower shape, basically, setting stuff on fire. Okay. During the I only, battery, see, I only see like 50 years here. Are you not done because the battle was so long? It, it, Barrow, so uh, during the campaign, Barrow, so he happened, which leads to a surprising and decisive English victory with, with many noble, with many French nobles and the king of Bohemia, John, who was allied to, to the French. Wow. French, right? I bet that, my Janney is surprised to listen to this. <laughs> So Ahmadi did a report on the Hundred Years' War he decided he was interested in learning more about. But it looks like you only made it 50 years through the war. So do you have to keep researching to get to 100 years? Yeah. <laughs> I think I don't got to like 20 years and I don't, and I haven't even finished, finished the 1355, which, which was a big English victory. Really? Well, it seems yeah. like it's, it's mostly English victories at this point. I wonder if at some point those people in northern France spoke English. I think there's an island where they speak English in France, right off of France. I'm pretty sure, sure, sure that, that, nor, that, that, that I think uh, 300 years before, that, that the person who controlled North won France at the time conquered England. Really? Ooh, yeah. I can't wait to hear that part. Well, but, but, but that was before the war. Hey, Amadi, you did such a great job on this, and you're a really good presenter. So I hope next time you're going to feel comfortable presenting to the group, because I would like them to see how hard you worked and what nice, nice work you did on this. All right. Next time, will you do it to the whole group? Yeah, yeah, next time I would do it to the whole group. All right, well, Liam is waiting for you guys in room one. So go oh. ahead and join him. I've sent an email to okay. the other boys. Jax was here, but as soon as I said book clubs, he disappeared. Yeah, yeah, he doesn't come <laughs> once, so. All right, <clears throat> okay. I was going to watch Percy Jackson with you guys tomorrow night, but I don't think I'm going to because I still haven't gotten a hold of all your parents to get permission. No. So maybe Monday night. Monday. Keep me posted because I'll watch too. Okay. Right. So um, Liam's in there and Amadi's ready to go. Amadi, you're okay. already assigned to room one. Go yeah, yeah, yeah. You know to... Okay. <laughs> What's he got on there? It looks like the Libyan flag or crown. <laughs> cool. <laughs>